Welcome back to Going Walkabout. We decided to leave Rome after five fabulous days. We wanted to explore some of Southern Italy. We thought making Salerno our base to explore would be best, as it is the gateway to Southern Italy. We figured from Salerno we could take day trips to the Amalfi Coast or go north to Pompeii. In this video, we'll explore both. Step one, we had to first get from Rome to Salerno. We found the easiest, least expensive, and quickest way to get from point A to point B in Italy is the use of the high-speed trains. To book train travel, go to railninja.com. They allow you to book tickets online, get your seats reserved. This allows you to have a stress-free and enjoyable trip and really be able to take in the train ride. The trains are clean and comfortable with Wi-Fi access. Hitting up to 200 miles per hour, you can literally watch the Italian countryside fly by. It is an awesome experience and a very relaxing and enjoyable way to travel. In no time at all, we were in Salerno. Salerno is an ancient city port located on the Gulf of Salerno on the Tyrrhenian Sea. Currently, the city is home to 135,000 Italians, with the port of Salerno handling over 10 million tons of cargo a year. Salerno has a bustling economy. The city has always been strategic. However, back in 1943, during World War II, it was at the center of Operation Avalanche, the Allied invasion of Italy to push back the German army. As the climate is beautiful most of the year, the area has been a magnet to tourists who want to visit the Amalfi villages or spend a day in Pompeii as it is only a quick train ride away. Salerno is also much less costly than any of the towns in the Amalfi area. Hotels in Amalfi can be 250 to 1,000 euros a night. We were able to get a great condo on the beach via bookings.com in Salerno for 125 euros a night. We had a kitchen so we could cook in and enjoy the local produce, along with our bottle of Prosecco every evening. With a view of the sea, what more could we ask for? Unfortunately, our first three days in Salerno were in a constant rain pour. <laughs> we thought as soon as we can count on a sunny day, we're going to hightail it up to Pompeii and explore the ruins. Pompeii, established in the 7th century BC and destroyed by volcanic ash, August 24th and 79 AD. The ash immediately creating a time capsule of history to be rediscovered in 1748 by D. Alcubierre. Pompeii sits at the base of Mount Vesuvius, a giant volcanic presence that dominates the area. Planning a visit to Pompeii, several things will help you have a better trip. The area is very large. If you don't get a guided tour, you may want to plan the sites you want to see in advance. Get an early start as it can get very crowded. And plan on at least three hours as there is so much to see. Some key things to notice as you walk around. The raised stones in the street these allowed the Romans to step over water and refuse without getting their togas dirty. You'll also notice the ruts near them. This is from chariots and carts. Hard to imagine the streets were used to the extent that they were literally able to grind down the stone with their cart wheels. The other thing that impressed me were the water fountains. They are everywhere. Clean water for all, another amazing feat accomplished by Roman ingenuity. And of course, they not only invented straight roads and aqueducts, but takeout food. Called Thymopoliums, these takeout food stalls are on almost every corner in Pompeii. Many of the ancient Pompeianians who did not have kitchens would have relied on these Thymopoliums for their hot meals. You will also consistently see the use of mosaics in many of the homes. And at the front of many of the homes are mosaics of dogs. The ancient Romans felt that the dog symbolized that the house was well guarded. Some of them even had some cats around too. 
The last bit of archaeology that you see repetitively in Pompeii are willies. They can be in front of a baker's business or in front of a home. The learned experts I researched said that they were there to ward off the evil eye or envy, as the phallic symbol denotes power and dominance in their society. Heads up, you'll be seeing more of these. The Romans were prone to sticking to plans, and as such, their homes all have the same plan, which makes it easier to view the ruins. You would enter a home and immediately see a pool of water. The roof over the water would be open to catch the rainwater. Around the pool would be the various rooms for eating and sleeping. Virtually all homes in Pompeii have a version of this same floor plan, be they big or small. So now that you are familiar with the Pompeii Roman floor plan, let's explore one of the finest homes, Domus Veterinorium. Apologies up front for mangling mispronunciations here. <laughs> Common in entryways and often throughout a home are men bearing their willies. Just a reminder, it is to ward off the evil eye. As you walk into the home, you'll see the water pool, and then you can explore the amazing artworks that decorate each of the rooms. The artisans were hired for every home, no matter how grand or how poor. They would use these different frescoes to actually enhance the experience of being in the room. In this case, they were in a room where they would do eating and you can see the beautiful lobster and fish on the walls. It's hard to imagine all of this was buried under ash for over 1500 years. So much looks like it had been recently painted. The other mainstay in the floor plan of the Pompeii home for the wealthy was an open garden area towards the back of the house. The one for Domus Veterinorium is especially stunning, boasting sculptures and a painted arcade. You'd never want to leave such an idyllic place. The effects of all the rain enhanced our time in Pompeii. The area was littered with the most beautiful poppies absolutely everywhere. It made the scenery stunning and the contrast of the green grass and the red poppies literally made every photograph look like a professional took it. There is one building still intact with a second story you can climb to the top of and view the whole of Pompeii. A majestic sight to behold, with its straight Roman roads and intricate planning. Pompeii was a small town with a world view. When an archaeologist did DNA testing on the bones of Pompeii, they found that the people came from all parts of the Mediterranean, as well as Northern Africa. A truly multicultural, multiracial city. We're enchanted by the fact that over 2,000 years ago, people lived so similarly to us, and yet they were gone in a cosmic blink of an eye. Don't wait too long to visit this historic and enchanting spot. Take time to view the marvelous feats of the ancients. Thanks for watching. If you're enjoying the videos, please like, share, or subscribe. Next stop, Malta.